So we're going to have a look now at sketching gradient functions. So this is a particular function that we've got here, which is f of x. And what they want us to do is they want us to draw the gradient function f dash x for the sketch of f of x, which has been provided. So we're trying to actually draw a function which represents the gradient of this function. So we think of a few different features of this graph. So first of all, it's always best to look on the x-axis. Sorry, it's always best to look where f of x has a zero gradient, where it's completely flat. Flat. So you can see at this point here, the gradient is zero. So when I'm drawing that function, I'm going to say that its gradient is zero. In other words, if I'm drawing y equals f dash x, I would be saying that the y coordinate is zero, the gradient is zero at that point. Now, when I look to this branch on the right hand side of this section, you will see for this branch that everything there is positive. So I know that I'm going to need the gradient function to be kind of somewhere up on the top half, because this is the section where the gradient function is positive, is where the y values are positive. And then the bit that I'm going to highlight here in green, you can see that this bit has a negative gradient. So this bit is a negative kind of gradient for that green section. And so if it's negative, it means it has to be on the bottom side of it. It has to be somewhere down here. I'm going to say that y is less than zero because the gradient function is negative. In other words, the gradient is negative. And then there's just one last thing to kind of notice about this graph here is that this is meant to be a sketch of a quadratic. And we know that if you have a quadratic like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, when you differentiate that to get the gradient function, you get 2ax plus b. In other words, this thing that I've got here is linear, so it will be a straight line. So if I wanted to sketch this gradient function, I could draw a straight line. It doesn't really matter about this. I could just draw a straight line going through that point there as a zero. So I'm just going to move that so it's kind of going through the place where the gradient there is zero. So this is a pretty good sketch of this. OK, I've, I've acknowledged that it was a... Um, a quadratic and I've now made it a straight line and I've also got this point here where the I've indicated that the gradient is zero because it has a y coordinate of zero and that's to correspond with this bit down here. So I'm going to do quite a few of these examples and this time I'm going to do one for a cubic. Now if you think about a cubic when you differentiate a cubic it's going to become a quadratic so it's worth thinking about what this might look like. So we're going to do these same bits. I'm going to identify the places where the gradient is zero. So at zero and at I don't know about 1.3 so I'm going to mark those bits on there about there and here. So that's where it's going to be crossing the axis. Then you can see in this section over here, it's then going to be positive. So over on this side is going to be a kind of positive section. And then on the in-between bit here and here, the gradient is going downhill. So that section in between is going to be a negative kind of bit down like this. And then over here on that branch, you can see that that is sloping upwards. So that's going to be a positive gradient. So it needs to be above the axis, above the axis for positive, below the axis for negative. And now that I've got it looking like this, I can actually just see it's going to be a type of quadratic. So I'm just going to do a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be a quadratic that's passing through these points that we've got here. So you're never going to be able to draw these perfectly, but it is literally just a sketch of what these things should look like. So this time I'm going to do it for a graph that is a trigonometric graph. Now you don't need to know the trigonometric graphs to do this, but this one that we can see here, this is y equals, this looks like, I think, minus cos x. So we'll see what this is going to, the gradient function will be. We're going to do the same things that we did before. So I'm going to say, OK, the gradient is zero here. So I'll mark that on. It's zero here. So I'll mark that on. Zero here, I'll mark it on. And zero here. So I'll mark it on. And then I'm going to look for the bits where the gradient is positive. So it's positive here and it's positive here. So I'm going to just mark that on the diagram. It needs to be up in the top half here because it's positive and it needs to be up in the top half here because it's positive. And then the gradient here is sloping downwards, and here it's sloping downwards. So that means it needs to be on the bottom half of the, the page for this bit. It needs to go onto the, the axis down here. And now that I've got it like this, you can pretty much spot that the graph is going to do this kind of shape. Okay, It's going to go from the zero, and then it's going to come down here like this, and then it's going to come back up. Not particularly well drawn there, 
and then it's going to come back down here like this. And so this is kind of interesting. It's actually telling us that if y is equal to cos of x, when you differentiate it to get dy by dx, you actually get sine x, if you recognize that. But we're just sketching um, graphs here, so you don't need to worry too much about cos and sine, because we do those differentiations in year 13. OK, let's try another one. So this time we have a cubic. We know that cubics, when you differentiate it, they're going to become a quadratic. So we're anticipating a quadratic graph here. I'm going to mark in the places where the gradient is zero. So that looks like it's about, I don't know, minus 0 0.8, something like that. So I'll mark that on here. It's also got a zero, a zero gradient over here. I don't know, that looks like a sort of 0 0.8. So I'm going to mark that here. And then this first section, we can see that it is a positive gradient here and it's a positive gradient in this bit. So when I go back to the graph, it's going to be somewhere positive over here and somewhere positive over here. And then the gradient inside this middle section is negative. And so that means it's going to have to be in the middle section at the bottom. So if I was going to sketch this, we know it's going to be a quadratic. So it's going to look roughly like this shape. We don't know exactly what the shape is going to look like, but we do know that it's going to pass through this point and this point here. Um, and we do know there's going to be the, a, a positive quadratic with the branches going upwards. So we'll try a couple more here. This time we're going to do this one's gradient function. Again, we're going to identify the places where there is a zero gradient. So this is a zero gradient. So straight underneath it, I want it to be a zero. And this gradient here is not quite zero. It looks like it's becoming zero. If you kept going, it would sort of level off. So it looks like it's slightly going uphill and it's also zero. So I think it's going to be kind of coming towards zero rather than being at exactly zero. OK, I'm going to highlight the bit that's negative. So this part of the graph is negative. And then I think the rest of the graph is all just positive like this. So for the negative section, I want it to start down here and then I want it to be positive in this bit. So it looks like it's just going to be negative until it gets to the point where it's got zero. Then it's in this kind of positive section and then the gradient goes back down towards being flat. So it's this kind of weird sort of bump shape. And again, it's just a sketch. So don't worry if it doesn't feel like it's perfectly correct. It's just trying to get, get more of an understanding of what a gradient function actually is. And then here is a much harder one to have a think about. So there's lots and lots of different sections to this graph. But if we use my strategy, it should just work out fine. So here we've got a zero gradient. So I'm going to mark that on the graph. Looks like we've also got a zero gradient somewhere around here. So I'll mark that on the graph. We've got a zero gradient here, so I'll mark that on the graph. And at the end, it looks like a zero gradient. But actually, if you think about this, it's coming towards a zero gradient from a negative. So I think it's probably going to be just below the line. It's coming up towards zero from that bit. So I'm going to highlight the sections of the graph that have a negative gradient. So that's going to be here. That means it's starting from somewhere down at the bottom. And then I've got this bit here is also negative. So for that section, it's also going to be somewhere at the bottom. Now, the rest of the section, this will be positive and this will be positive, meaning it's got to be somewhere up here and it's got to be somewhere up here. So it's a bit like joining the dots, really. You can see it's starting from down. It's going to this bit. It's going to be positive and then it goes back to zero. It's going to be positive and then it goes back to zero. And then it's got to be in the negative section and then it's coming up towards zero again. So I'm just going to put all of that onto the graph. So it's going to be down here. Then coming up, then coming down, then coming up, then coming down and crossing through, and then coming back up towards zero. Now, there's a few bits that are interesting that if you'd like to kind of challenge yourself a bit further, we've got these points where there's actually the gradient function has got a zero gradient, which is referring to these things which are called points of inflection. You might remember earlier on I talked about when a curve goes from being convex to concave, that point is referring to where it's bending like this. So you can see here again, it's swerving from it being like this kind of U-shaped curve to kind of like an N-shaped curve. That's corresponding to this bit that we've got down here on the graph. And again, in the last one where it's bending at this point, that's corresponding to this bit of it. But that's kind of like year two content and a little bit more for you to think about. So this is going to give you some tips that should help you to do exercise 12J um, and good luck with that.